Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode on this public investment playlist series. Full disclaimer, this episode is gonna be diabolical because I'll have to address the elephant in the room, which is what is going on with the markets. You probably opened up your portfolio this week and you certainly, or almost certainly, you took a hit. Having that said, everything that I say on these videos is not investment advice. I do me, you do you. I just created this series as an entertaining now, for entertaining purposes, to be honest, it's just like a time capsule so that in a few years I can look back and rewatch these videos and see, oh, this was a good decision, this was a bad decision, ah, that was going on, and it's always a good way for my friends or other people to approach me and we talk about these kind of subjects because here in Portugal sometimes it seems like it's a bit of a taboo. Well, without any further ado, and instead of me jumping straight to the portfolio, let's keep, give a bit of context. At the time of this recording, it's like Wednesday, 7th of, uh, of August, and on Monday we had a pretty big crash uh, in a lot of markets. Just for reference, uh, the Japanese market didn't have one day crash since 1987, this big, but something was a bit weird. On Tuesday, it also rebounded. It was one of the best days since 2008. So, something strange is going on, and for context, in terms of macroeconomics, allegedly, if you open the news, probably this will be the narrative that they will, that they will give you, and probably it's the most likely scenario what caused all of this. For reference, the Japan has not risen the interest rates for about 17 years, and they have raised their interest rates twice in the past five months and recently or the latest one was a couple days ago what this caused it was like a ripple effect so investors were kind of used to have uh, this cheap money that they could borrow and uh, suddenly when interest rates start rising this kind of money becomes more expensive so they they dump a bunch of markets panic is almost like a, a disease it's very easy to spread it's spreading like wildfire so if you see here a lot of people panicking even though you don't really know why they are panicking you kind of get a bit of anxiety and i feel like this is what's happening uh, with the markets or at least what happened on monday so you see this happening in japan and add this in the new york stock exchange for example i have a lot of assets uh, listed and on, on that exchange and when they open if you see even the magnificent seven were all kind of dropping Something also interesting happened, and you don't see a lot of people talking about this, uh, or some brokerages uh, did not allow uh, trading, quote unquote, you will see news that some errors were happening, trading was altered, this happened with Robinwood, this happened with Vanguard, and I don't remember the few, these are the ones that are coming from the top of my brain, but essentially, uh, imagine just me here on live on YouTube opening my portfolio and I see my position going from, I don't know, the portfolio is like 3,000 something euros going to 3,000, 2,800, 2,700 and seeing my portfolio actually decreasing, potentially losing a thousand or a couple of thousand euros and without having the ability to sell. Well, this doesn't sound like a free market but without being so much too much of a conspiracy, this did not happen with hedge funds, this didn't happen with multi-millionaire uh, firms, so take that with a bit of grain of salt and if you open the news you will see everything panicking. Warren Buffett sold 50% of Apple stock and is typically a holder, so this is giving a lot of vibes, something much worse, worse uh, is coming ahead, but I'm here to give you my take. And um, honestly, I will just keep sticking with my strategy of dollar cost averaging. Remember, everyone, we are all in different situations. Probably, if you're closer to your retirement age, maybe you can be a bit scared. But me, since I have uh, my whole life ahead of me, I'm sure I will face a lot of crashes. Here on this playlist, if you follow this channel for quite some time, you will see sometimes that I open my portfolio while it's in the red. Sometimes I open it while it's in the green. That doesn't really affect me. I will keep um, dollar cost averaging, so every month I will be contributing to this portfolio because I know for sure that I will not be able to time the market. Imagine that you had sold everything on Monday and now on Tuesday it already rebounded quite a lot. Let's go for some history lesson. If I recall correctly, correctly from 1986 to 1989 in Japan, the stock market, Nikkei 225, they had a total appreciation of 200%. So that more or less, without being a policy, it's like 
almost like 50% per year, which is very crazy considering that the average return is around 80 to 10%. But after that period, since December 2019-89, if I remember correctly, the market went to, well, let's say, not a pleasant place. And if you had invested all of your money on, let's say, January of 2090, do you want to guess how many years it would take you uh, to, to reach the, those same level of heights? Try to guess in 3, 2, 1. Well, it was February of this year. To be fair, um, for the past like 10 years, the, the stock market was growing. But if you had never, never invested, so invested everything uh, back then when it was the... the um, the, the big drop or the, the top, the high on 1990, it would take you not days, not weeks, not months, not years, decades. Like it would take more than my entire existence, which is absolutely wild to, to think about it. But at the same time, you also have other cases in 2020, and we lived through this one. Uh, probably if you're watching this video, I don't think I have that much, uh, that younger generation, like three years old. Uh, watching or a four-year-old watching these videos, but if I do, kudos to you. In 2022, we also had an economic meltdown, it was the pandemic, and uh, look at the markets, you had one of the best returns in the, it was a lot of lowering interest rates, a lot of quantitative easing, and you had pretty amazing returns. If this is sustainable, well, absolutely debatable. So now it begs the, the big question. So what is going on, Pedro? Should I sell everything from my stock, my portfolio? Should I buy into the dip? Well, you just have to remain calm and do your strategy. Of course, in the ideal scenario, and I got a lot of phone calls, a lot of messages, wouldn't it be great to be selling uh, right now at the top and then we can buy it a bit lower? Of course, it would have been ideal last month when my portfolio was trading at 30% uh, return to sell everything and now buy back everything right and assuming that will come back but I don't know like I could be selling everything uh, well let's say on Monday because I thought things were gonna get worse and then suddenly get better this is also a very emotional debate for you to have with yourself and see how much mu much stress do you want to add to your life I have the philosophy that investing should be about making your quality of life better and I feel like that would make me just look and care more about the portfolio. I'm investing money that right now I could afford to lose. I don't need this money to pay the rent. I'm not planning to, to have a kid or to buy a house right now or prepare for a wedding. So this is something I am very comfortable. Of course, it hurts, but if you've been here for quite some time, you know I've made other videos where the portfolio was red. And this is also, this video is also gonna work a bit as a warning. Uh, because right now, from my perspective, it doesn't seem like the economy is melting down and we're going to go into the recession. Of course, this can happen. It also happened in 2028, well, with a few exceptions of some, of some people that knew everything seemed about fine and then it went to crash. But at the end of the day, this is not going to really change my, my strategy. If we start cr crashing, if we start having a recession, well, Great for me, I will dollar cost average. I still have a really long time horizon. I have a long life ahead of me. And, and I also want to prepare that this can be really quick, like it was the COVID crash, or it can be something like in Japan, it took a lot of years to really uh, recover. But always remember, having your money in the bank is also not a good option because you're also losing purchasing power. So let's move into the stock portfolio itself. All right, so now for the thing that you came for, which is the public investment portfolio itself, the typical structure that we have going on for the past years now. Let's open the Trading212 app. So this is how the portfolio is looking at. So the total value of portfolio is 3,500 euros. So we've invested a total of 2,995 which gives us a return of 550 euros that you can see here on the screen, which gives more or less 18.71%. So right now we are not in the green, but if you saw the previous episode, we were averaging a 30% return. And then suddenly we had Monday, Tuesday, and you saw the portfolio dropped all the way. Let me see if I can even go a bit more specific. Let's go for the week. And the portfolio dropped all the way to 11% return. And since then, 
uh, it has returned, this was on, you can see here, uh, at 1 p.m. from August 5th, which was on Monday, and since then it has returned to 19%. You can see here the positions, Alibaba is down, Google is up, Amazon is up, CVS Health is, is well, it's basically flat, flat, far-fetched, it was a wrong bet in the past, you can see here the good and the bad, Intel, our dear Intel, how this company has hurt this portfolio, it is down 40%, actually I'm quite disappointed with the company, especially due to the reported earnings recently and they are poor guidance. It's not uh, a good position to be in right now. I will not be selling the company uh, itself. Maybe I can consider to to lower my, my entry price by contributing but right now I don't feel confident for the for the future of this company especially when you go look at previous uh, earning reports and strategy back from 2000 uh, and 22 when I have these portfolio, I have invested in this company on other portfolios that, uh, the other than this one public and they had certain guidance that they really didn't uh, met uh, whatsoever even the revenue is down let's see if they can come back or maybe not maybe this will be a geolytical play imagine if something going on uh, with China Taiwan semiconductors and maybe uh, Intel can take the spot um, that way but Having that said, so we have here the ETFs, which are the bulk of the portfolio, they are the ones holding this uh, really well. JD.com is down, uh, it's another shiny stock, this also might be a geological position if we can get out of this madness soon. This, of course, they are all long-term plays and you can see here um, the rest of the portfolio. For the pies, this also makes these videos a bit more interesting because in the last episode we were seeing basically all the pies that I have created they were always in the green and you can see here if I had invested all my money back in January of 2022 we'd be up more than we are up uh, right now yet if we look at May, June and July of this month if I had invested all my money on these months right now I'll be losing or I'll be in the red especially from the, the investment in, uh, in June so let's see what pie I have created for August and sorry for moving this super quick let me just here edit the pie, I don't need to edit the pie you can see here, let me edit the pie so it's easier to see we have 25% for the information technology sector remember this is an ETF, so this is a basket of stocks, not a single stock these are companies like Nvidia, Apple, Microsoft, even uh, Intel so it's a very focus on IT sector then I have uh, brother ETF which is the S&P 500 ETF so this is mimicking the 500 biggest companies in the US then 50% on Disney I was really happy with the with the earnings that they have and the stock seems to be uh, about flat recently I've also watched Deadpool Wolverine great movie if you are a Marvel fan and uh, let's see how if the stock performance is as good as the movie cameos that we had this week JD.com, I'm also dollar cost, uh, dollar cost averaging down on this position. Now we have an even broader ETF that I already invested in the past, which is the Vanguard FTS All World ETF. So this basically is a basket of stocks comprised of 3,600 companies, more or less. So basically investing on this uh, ETF is, you mitigate a lot of risk, but then again, you cannot expect uh, big returns because you are so diversified. Some companies, some companies will do well, other companies will do, won't do uh, so well. Then we have Alibaba, Intel just the 5%, Starbucks and Nike. So let's close here the portfolio because it was already done and invest. Let's invest what we're typically investing 150 these past few um, months and as the time goes on, if I progress in my career, if I get uh, if my salary rises in the future, if I'm able to save a bit more, maybe I'll contribute uh, more than 250 euros. Maybe we have a massive crash that we were just talking about. And maybe I see better opportunities and uh, I will decide, oh, maybe this is a good time to be loading up the bags. Or who knows, maybe I'll be doing more. Lately I've been doing a lot of travel, so I've been spending more money. I haven't been investing as much as in other periods. Everyone needs to find their own balance and uh, see, um, well, try to make your best decisions with the variables that you have uh, at the current present. And you can see here the distribution, so 22.5% 20, 
uh, 22.50 euros is going to Walt Disney, 7.5 is going to Alibaba, Intel 7.55, Starbucks, and you can see here the rest. So the, mo the bulk is always going for the, for the ETFs. So let's confirm buy, and this will execute, some of them will execute right now because the, the stock exchange is already open. Let's see if everything is good. Perfect, 150, and if I go here to the buy, so it's already flattish, or it's minus 0.1%. So the total portfolio right now is looking at a 17.7 .7 return with a total value of 3,656 euros, a window with a total invested of 3,000 euros. So we have invested more than 3,000 euros right now. It would be crazy if you ask me today, well, Pedro, just invest 3,000 euros here on this stock. I wouldn't probably have the, the money uh, for that, or it would be really crazy. But if you really do it consistently through long periods of, of time, it doesn't really bother you that much. Having that said, thank you all for watching these videos. I'll see you in the next episode. I have a couple of vlogs coming up uh, soon as well. I just have to coordinate everything. Thank you all.